The Whipple procedure, or pancreaticoduodenectomy, is a fairly complex surgery that can take anywhere from five to eight hours to perform. It's typically uh, 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 done uh, in, in the surgery suites, which is on the third floor here at Roswell Park, and patients are in the hospital approximately nine days after surgery, but that can vary anywhere from seven days to as many as a few weeks, depending on how uh, the recovery goes, and also depending on uh, how you're doing prior to the surgery. If you're in very, very good health, uh, young and very active versus maybe older with a number of medical problems, that can have a large impact on the length of and, and uh, how, we, how you recover. What I'd like to do is just talk about the actual procedure and describe what the surgery entails. So I'd like, with the help of this diagram, I'd like to walk you through what a Whipple procedure actually is. Now in this example, we're talking about a tumor in the head of the pancreas. This is the pancreas, the tail of the pancreas, the neck and body of the pancreas, and the head of the pancreas. And recall though, however, that you can have other types of cancers that we would do a Whipple procedure for, but in essence the operation is the same whichever type of cancer uh, we're dealing with. So in a Whipple procedure, uh, the head of the pancreas is removed, and this is the head here, as well as the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. The reason we need to do that is because there are lymph glands in this area, and those have to be removed as part of the surgery. What the pathologist will do is look at those lymph glands to see if the tumor has spread there, because these tumors can spread to the lymph glands, and that's very important in, in us determining what kind of therapy you might need after surgery, be it chemotherapy or radiation therapy. So the Whipple procedure involves, the classic Whipple procedure, involves removing the lower part of the stomach, the first 10 inches of the small intestine, the head of the pancreas, and all the lymph nodes around it. We also come across the bile duct, which carries the yellow bile from the liver. So all uh, the uh, bile that's produced by the liver comes down, is stored in the gallbladder, goes through the head of the pancreas, and you'll see here if there's a tumor that can cause blockage of the bile duct. The gallbladder is removed with the Whipple procedure as well. So what you see here is the head of the pancreas, the first part of the intestine, the lower bile duct, the gallbladder are all removed with the uh, Whipple procedure. So, and this part of the surgery generally takes about three or four hours. Uh, it can be shorter if it's, if it's uh, simpler, but it can also be more complicated if the tumor involves some of the major blood vessels that run behind the head of the pancreas, and we'll, we'll talk about that in more detail if, if your particular situation warrants that. But this would be considered the standard Whipple procedure. There is a modification of the Whipple procedure where we do not remove the lower part of the stomach. That's called a modified Whipple procedure, and that may be done in certain circumstances where it's appropriate. The first part of the operation re involves removal of the tumor, and this is what it would look like after we've removed the, the, the tumor, the head of the pancreas, the lower bile duct. So what you have is you have the, the, the tail of the pancreas, which is about 50% of the pancreas, and this is the part of the pancreas that does make insulin. Uh, it also makes digestive juice. So many patients can do just fine just with the tail of the pancreas. Some will need replacement with pancreatic enzymes. Some may need uh, some insulin replacement if they already have some mild diabetes. But uh, many patients, about half, uh, will do fine with just the tail of the pancreas. The stomach is here and the bile duct is here. So you'll see here, for the second part of the operation, that involves hooking back up, basic plumbing, so to speak, uh, to hook the pancreas, the stomach, and the bile duct back to the intestines so that you can eat normally. So what I'm going to do is show you the second part of the uh, Whipple operation or the reconstruction part. So the, I'm going to redraw it to help Walk, walk us through this. So here's the pancreas, and then the liver here, and the bile duct. And if you'll notice here, the intestine, we're going to move forward because we have to fill, you know, there's a gap there. So we're going to move this intestine forward, and what's going to happen here is we're going to sew the pancreas 
to the intestine. Now the pancreas is generally a soft gland, so this is generally the most difficult part of the operation. Oftentimes we'll be wearing magnifying glasses because this little pancreatic duct may be only a few millimeters in size. And then the next thing we do is hook up the bile duct, which is where the yellow bile uh, comes down from the liver, and then we loop it around over the pancreas like so and hook up the stomach. So what you'll see here is that the pancreatic juice which helps you digest your food as well as the bile juice which helps you digest fatty foods is going these juices are going to go into the intestine okay then they're going to come around here and the food is going to be in the stomach that's going to come here and the digestive juices in the food are going to mix together so digestion will occur normally a after this point so we're basically recreating the normal physiology where you have your digestive juices and the bile juice mixing with the food um, so that you can uh, eat and have a, a normal uh, digestive function now we do put there's a couple of things I want to I want to mention here. First of all, in terms of the potential problems that can happen after surgery. Now, the Whipple procedure is a complex surgery. The surgery can take, as I said, anywhere from six to eight hours, and this is generally the second part of the procedure. But one of the most problem areas we have, because the pancreas is very soft and you have to sew it to the intestine, we can get leaks from this area. About 15 to 20 percent of the time, we will get a leak from this area. And what we do at the time of surgery is we put a drain in that comes uh, out of your right side. There's generally a single drain hooked up to a little bulb, a little plastic bulb. And that drain we, we lay right next to the pancreas. So if the pancreas, and that little drain has holes in it, so if there's a leak of pancreatic juice, the drain will pick it up and it'll carry it out to the bulb. Now if that happens, many times that can be managed with just the drain and uh, modifying your diet, putting you on a low fat diet. And as I said, about nine out of 10 times this will heal on its own, but every so often it won't. And we may have to do some other interventions such as a, the radiologist putting in a drain through the skin under ultrasound or CT guidance because there's a fluid collection. What may happen here is that you can get a pocket of fluid that the drain doesn't drain and the radiologist will put a little drain in it. And then occasionally we will have to take patients back to surgery. Fortunately, it's fairly low, uh, less than about five to 10% of the time, someone may have to go back to surgery to clean up uh, an infection that occurs in this area. So the big problem uh, that we have with the surgery is pancreatic leak. Uh, lesser so, it would be a leak from this area. That's relatively rare. The other common problem that we'll see in as many as 20 to 25 percent of patients is what's called delayed gastric emptying. Delayed gastric emptying is when you eat your food and the food just sits in your stomach for a period of time. It doesn't want to go through and so for an hour or two after, after uh, you eat you'll feel full and uncomfortable. That's called delayed gastric emptying. Uh, rarely, but I need to mention it, is that you can have something called dumping where you eat the food and it goes down too fast. So um, there, there are changes in your digestive system that occur with this surgery. Fortunately, most of those are short-lived. Uh, delayed gastric emptying usually resolves in a few days to a few weeks after surgery. Uh, and we can make some modifications of the diet to help with those symptoms. The other thing I will mention about the, 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 the tail of the pancreas does make insulin. And so patients who are diabetic uh, may find that their sugars are a little harder to control after the surgery. They may need more, more insulin or if they're on, on pills may need some insulin. Patients who are, are not diabetic are very unlikely to need insulin after this surgery. Generally what I'll, I'll um, say is that if you have uh, some pre-existing diabetes or you're uh, predisposed to diabetes because you have a family history, having the Whipple procedure may lead to earlier onset of, onset of problems with uh, uh, elevated blood sugar. So I think that's something that needs to be uh, mentioned. Um, the other uh, thing the pancreas does is the en uh, makes pancreatic juice or enzymes. So about 40% of patients after the surgery will need pancreatic enzyme replacement. Those are pills that you take uh, right before you eat a meal that helps you digest your food. Um, the, the sign of that would be 
If your stools are very loose and you have diarrhea after the surgery, that may indicate that you need some pancreatic enzyme replacement. So about 40% of the patients will need enzyme replacement and the, uh, there will be uh, patients that may need uh, 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 better sugar management after the Whipple procedure.